Blog Talk Radio. I didn't want to kill anyone. You have to believe me. I just wanted to be your friend. But now you've got to go too. Welcome to Take Two Radio. We are pleased to bring you interviews with people in the entertainment and music industry, discussions and recaps of the four remaining daytime soaps, that's The Bold and the Beautiful, The Young and the Restless, General Hospital, and Days of Our Lives, as well as various other shows. For upcoming and previous shows, check Take2Radio.com, that's with the number two, and you can find us on Blog Talk Radio, iHeart Radio, iTunes, and other streaming apps. Follow us on social media at Take Two Radio, and thanks for listening. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Take Two Radio. I'm Pam, your host, and believe it or not, everyone is here. Everyone is here. We yeah, have David, we have Hi, David, everybody. Anthony, Carol, Carolyn, Will, and Candace. Can you believe it? Hi, Hi everybody. Word. Party will. Wow. Hugs, hugs. It's I missed all of y'all. It's the radio bunch. It's a story. It's our virtual table. We're back. <laughs> we're back in. in, in we're yeah, back on track. And, it's still so good. Yeah, and beyond wow. having us all here, we have an, another amazing conversation that I have been waiting a yes. very long time to right. have. Well, let's get, <laughs> let's get to it. Let's get to it. So tonight, we welcome primetime award-winning actress, Patrika Darbo. She's been in film and TV for over 35 years. You may know her from various TV shows, such as The Bold and the Beautiful, Days of Our Lives, The Young and the Restless, The Big Bang Theory, Step by Step, and so many other ones. And then there's films such as Leaving Normal, Babe, Speed 2, In the Line of Fire. She gets around, I tell you. She gets around. (laughs) And doesn't she have an amazing Roseanne Barr impression as well? well? Yes. Yes. Welcome, uh, uh, Patrika. uh, Hi. Well, thank you. Oh, hi, Patricia. Oh, hi, Patricia. Oh, hi, Patricia. Oh, I love you. I love you. <laughs> I love you back. Thank you. Okay, I'm hearing okay, an, ex- I'm hearing echo. an ex- echo. Is anyone else? Too. Is I anyone else? Too. From my end? No. 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 About here. About here. I, I hear think it, it might be Patricia. Patricia, are you listening to us? Somebody to us? Has- I'm listening to you. Um, I hope you're listening to me. I'm a dinosaur as far as technical things, so if something's going wrong, I can't help you. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you I have your computer you on your as computer well as talking on, on the phone? Well as talking on the phone? No, honey. I am in uh, my bedroom behind closed doors so that, that my husband's on another phone in another room, on, uh, and I'm on my cell. I'm all by myself. I don't have a computer on or anything. <laughs> All right, I all hate right. to ask right. you to do right. this, but can you call this, back? Can you call back? All right, Same number, figure everything, it out. I'll call you right back. Right. Right. I'll call you right back. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much. No problem. Hmm. How all about right. now? All right, talk, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, it was her. Okay, so I'm here. here. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yes. One at a okay. time. So. One at a time. <laughs> okay. Hello, hello. So, okay. Hi, right. I'm here. I have to say this. For my generation, like the 80s generation, you know, the fabulous 80s generation, Patrice Dabo, like, we, she has really also helped raise us because yep. some of you guys may remember, you know, she was on Growing Pain. You guys right. remember yep. that? And, All right. And, Patrice, can I mean, you hear us? Yes, I'm back. Yes. Oh my gosh! I still hear that. Oh my that. gosh! I still <laughs> hear that. <laughs> um, I don't know what it is. I'm not sure what, what to do. Uh, let me see if I take you off speaker and I just talk with the phone at my ear. Hold on. Yeah. How's this? All right. That's, That's it. That's, good. That's what it was. That's it. 
perfect. Okay, you, it was, and you I had said you you're on not speaker. tech savvy. You said you're not tech savvy. Look at you. <laughs> I, I, I was like going, uh, uh, let me try to push a couple buttons. Otherwise, you know, we're screwed because I can't figure this out. So. <laughs> Oh my Candace gosh. Candace was just saying how you have been with us in our lives since the eighties and she referenced growing pains and I immediately said, Oh my God, yes, she has helped raise us. Yeah. I, I, yeah, honey, I've been around. I got a little beaded bag, honey. I can work a curb anytime. So <laughs> honey, so, so can we. So can we we can be but no, it's it's one of those things where, you know, obviously uh, you know, you have about Five various audience who knows you from film, so you know digital sitcoms, and you know you just have the best personality ever. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you. So Thank you. We all know. You know, it, it's it's funny because I was talking. This actually did happen today. I'm not making this up. Today at work, I had told my coworkers. I said, "Oh, I'm I'm, I'm going to do an interview with Kika Dabo." And my boss came out and said, I know her. And I was like, wait a minute, my boss does not watch. Now, her mother watched Days Well Live, but she does not. I'll be completely sorry, Casey, for her, her, telling everybody this. But she knows you from step by step. So, <laughs> okay, like, so many people have grown up with me, yes. Right. So it's sort of like, okay, I know you, obviously, from so digital primetime. I know you all the way. And she's like, and I'm just thinking, that's amazing to have that kind of career. Where I've been very been blessed. I've worked. I will say I've worked it. hard for yeah. it, but yes, but I've, I've, you know, I've, I've got to do it all. The only, my only bucket list is I want to do Broadway. That's my bucket list. So. <laughs> oh, well, I have a funny feeling that. Oh, honey, if anybody, up. if anybody, honey, it's you. Yes. <laughs> Start it off. <laughs> Well, like, everybody has a couple questions for you, so if you're ready, we'll go ahead and get started. All righty. All right. Well, first of all, since you've been in the business 35 years, you've done so much, how did you actually decide to become an actress? And what was your first role? Well, I- <laughs> It's interesting because my mother said I came out of the womb and she always called me Sarah Bernhardt because I was a little bigger than life as a child growing up. Um, My first role, I think, coming into Hollywood that paid me, I think it was, listen, honey, my memory is not that good, but I think it was the Jeffersons. Um, And that's how far back I go to the Jeffersons. Um, Yes. Um, And it was really kind of weird because I got a call like in the middle of the night um, and, and let me keep in mind that I was working a full eight to, you know, eight to five job. And um, I get a call like at about eight o'clock saying, we'd like you to come in um, for um, a, a, a marathon runner. And I was like, hello, do you know who I am? <laughs> I said, uh, I, 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 listen, honey, I'm the last person that's a marathon runner. I don't run unless somebody's chasing me and it has big teeth. Um, so I think you have the wrong person. I'm a big girl. So she said, oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you very much. She hangs up. Ten minutes later, I get a call back and she goes, no, no, you're who we want. And I went, okay. So now I have to go to an audition. I now call my boss and leave a message saying that I have a dental appointment. And I go into um, – I go into this audition and um, I get the role and now I've got to call my boss and tell him that I'm I'm having a root canal so I won't be in. (laughs) Oh, God, what a liar I was. Um, Anyway, so I got the job on the Jeffersons and it was basically George Jefferson was in a marathon with his upstairs neighbor and they were not marathon runners and this man on crutches passes them. Um, this um, uh, older man passes them, then this big lady, me, passes them. Uh, so <laughs> it was sort of a sight gag, but it was a special business job, and I got that role. And that sort of started a lot of stuff off. And I just, I mean, listen, I've had my roof repaired for a million times because I had to, you know, I, I know. We actors are good liars, and that's what makes us great actors. <laughs> So, um, but a lot of, but when I did, I will have to say when I did get the job, I turned in vacation time. So I never really took advantage because I never took a vacation. I always gave my vacation time as when I got a job. So 
anyway. Ah, uh, well, there you go. You made up for it. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun, though. I mean, it, to to get paid to do what you love to do is even better. No, it's, it's always a good thing. I mean, I held down another job for 20 years as a lady executive until I had a man tell me that I was a woman no more than a goat and to never contradict him again. Um, and uh, when I did, uh, yes, ma'am. And when I briefly did stand up, I went, bye. Um, so, uh, <laughs> but I did, I mean, I told the, the president of the company that I was giving him 20 minutes or two weeks that I couldn't work with that person and they were lucky I wasn't suing them. So, you know, but that started my career in full time. You know, it's like, I always believe, uh, as they said, God closes the door, he opens the window. Um, right. So mm-hmm. right. things have been good, so. Yeah, definitely, and we're so happy about that. Um, There's one thing that I've been curious about, and that's when you do roles like you have for uh, Rango, where you did the voice of Delilah Maybell, and uh, the sheep voice, and it's funny that you just went (laughs) by for Babe. (laughs) Um, It seems like a lot of fun to do, but how do you decide what voice you use when doing roles like that, and do they give you an idea of what what they want? Well, for Rango, it was interesting because they told you what they wanted. This was kind of a Western kind of Southern drawly thing, and, Mm -hmm. you know, they were kind of like, White, white, trashy kind of wild, crazy people, you know, people that don't have any teeth and that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, when I, So it was kind of like that. So you kind of get to make it up in your own mind what you want. And uh, fortunately, I was lucky enough to, um, to get that role. Uh, I did. Um, and what was so interesting about that is normally when you're doing voiceovers for a role like that, you're in a sound booth. And there's nobody else around except the director telling you what he wants. In this kid situation, we were all like given like a a bonnet and a purse uh, from the 1800s. So we were we were dressed as our characters, and we we would go out and rehearse it, and then we would go and do it all together in a sound booth. Nice. Yeah, so we virtually were working with each other in that one. For um, Babe, uh, this was a loop group that I belonged to. I'm not sure if you're familiar with what a loop group is, but it's the the people that do the ADR work, and they fill in the voices, the voices that are not done by stars, Mm quote-unquote. So I was a a sheep, I was a chicken. I'm not sure what else I was in that movie, but it was a whole group of actors – who would fill in these voices they needed for the sheep for the things that weren't voiced by the the people who had speaking roles, like the dog had a speaking role, and he was throughout the movie. She was throughout the movie. Um, The head sheep had a speaking role, and she was through it. So we were sort of the background people, and we all worked together doing that. And um, that was a fun project. Nobody realized how how fun that was going to be. And what's more interesting about that, is nobody did any um, puppies or, you know, puppets or anything that was babe. Nothing was done for that first movie except McDonald's, all right, the hamburger place where you mm-hmm. buy a chicken or a piece of meat. They're the only ones that did little finger puppets of the dogs and <laughs> that, which was crazy. Huh. You yeah. know, here you're doing, you know, anyway. So, but when they did the second movie, I mean, they went wackadoodle because, I mean, there was the, the sheep, the the little um, babe had a hair piece, and he was a puppet, and there was the dog and the everybody. So it was crazy, but it was a fun thing to do. Yeah, and you don't have to get dressed up for it either. <laughs> <laughs> no, now, now when you're doing a lot, I mean, a lot of the voiceover auditions that I do here, I do in my, um, you know, in my bedroom, which has the least echo, and do it on my phone and send it in. So, um but a lot of, uh, you know, I, it's not my primary. Uh, there are so many people that are so much better at it than I am. Um, and uh, I'm blessed to have an on-camera career. But some people have a career totally doing voiceover stuff. Um, and when I was the governor for the TV Academy, my co-governor, um, Bob Bergen, was the voice of per- Porky Pig. He has a big studio yep. in his office. And everything comes to him for any time he's doing any kind of voiceover stuff because that's how he makes his living totally. 
So yeah, me, I'm yeah. on my phone doing a recording. He's in a sound booth, so it's crazy. <laughs> he gets paid mm. a little bit more. <laughs> he gets a little bit more jobs. I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, he, yeah, he works. He works a lot more often and gets paid more. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so funny. But it really does seem like a fun thing to do. And it's something that, you know, I could never be in front of the camera. That's why I'm on the phone doing these interviews instead. So I could probably do voiceover very easily, you know. (laughs) Well, I think you have to realize that the voiceovers are different. Like if you're selling and if you want the best clean laundry in the world, you must use Tide. Tide will take everything out. Or you can be, <laughs> come over here, little girl, and let me show you something. <laughs> you know, so there, We're getting there, performance, there, too. <laughs> there, are various, there are various types of, 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 of voiceover. You're either like the cartoon and creating a character, or you're doing um, a flat voice to sell something. Um, so, I mean, it's, there's, it's, it's a wide open business. I will tell you that voiceover is one of the hardest to get involved in um, because there's mm-hmm. so many people that do such a good job and one minute they can sell you Tide and the next minute they can be that person over, you know. So mm-hmm. um, it, it, it's, it's a tough thing and there, there are so many people that are so highly skilled at it uh, that work there all the time. Yeah, I could see that. I could definitely understand that. Well, thank you for answering my questions. And uh-huh. next up, we have Willie. Okay, Willie. Hola, Patricia. Hi, honey. Okay, before I ask my question, i got to share with you, you and I have a personal connection. Do you know what that connection is? I have no idea. Okay, a few years ago, I was honored to have you be interviewed on my online publications magazine of Party Wheels Online Publications magazine. It was such a treat having you to interview. Well, uh, thank you very much, Willie. I wish I could say, oh, God, I remember everything. Uh, honey, I'm oh, old. Yeah, I can remember. I, I'm, I'm oh, sitting in the bedroom now well. going, who am I talking to and why? <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I hope we had a good relationship. Yeah. <laughs> I it hope was, we had a good, good relationship. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, good, yeah, then. Okay. Okay, here are my two questions. Okay. Okay. Were you surprised when it was Wicked Clyde Weston that Nancy met with on the dating app? Was I surprised about meeting Clyde on the date? Honey, I'm never surprised. Listen, they give me a script, they tell me what I'm going to do, and I, I go do it. I'm like, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> so, um, uh, listen, honey, I, listen, James Reed, North and South, hello. I'm of that generation right? where yeah. we, all sw- we all swooned over him. So suddenly I'm like there, and there's a couple times I won't get to kiss him, honey. Listen, I have friends who are my age going, oh, my God, North and South, he was there. Ah! Okay, so it's been uh, fun, uh, uh, wonderful working with him. Um, anyway, so I guess I'm surprised that I get moved around to be hugging and kissing on people because I never think about that. I think I'm serving beer and peanuts, yeah. not getting a hug and kiss on some stud, you know. But, yeah, that's what's good about my career, folks. <laughs> so. Yes, yes. I so As soon as I saw the chemistry brewing between Nancy's character and Clyde, I'm like, yes, thank you, Ron, thank you. <laughs> okay, sweetie, I got one more question for you. Okay, here we go. Absolutely. If you if you were Nancy, what would you be feeling about that vibe with him being such a bad, bad boy? Well, I think, you know what, I don't think, as Nancy, um, for Patrika playing Nancy, she doesn't really mm-hmm. know his history. But you have to remember, she's uh-huh. been in New York. She only came back to Salem because of, you know, she was sure that Craig was cheating on her. So she really has yes. no idea who who he is. It sort of happens when everybody's going, oh, my God, what are you doing, Mom, from Chloe, and um, all this going on. So she really has no precognition or any pre-knowledge of who he is. So it's a learning thing for her, too. Yes, yes. I totally agree. And, I, again, I'm just I'm loving the whole uh, chemistry, and I'm looking forward to more. Thank you so much for answering my question. I love you so much. Absolutely, honey. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Willie. And next up we have, I believe it was Carolyn. Oh, hi, how are you? This is so I'm fine, exciting. Carolyn, how are you? Thank I'm you. Good, I'm good. Um, can you tell us uh, more about the, the Thalians and what the organization is about? Okay, back in the 1950s, more or less, Debbie Reynolds started the Thalians. And she had, you know, um, Frank Sinatra was part the Rat Pack was all part of it. It was a whole different era of time. But what she did was she wanted to make sure she took care of people, uh, especially our um, service people, that had any mental health issues. Um, so the Thalians basically, right now, everything we do is we donate to um, UCLA's Operation MEND, which is to take care of our returning vets um, some have been in horrific fires and are burned, so we're taking care of their physical as well as their mental. But primarily, we try to deal with mental health right this moment. So, um, and that's what we do is we try to raise money for that. So, I would encourage anybody to go online and try to become a member. Please join us at any of our events. We're trying to make it back in the 2000s. Um, the same organization that had been in the 1950s. Um, there were a lot more stars involved there. But of course, Debbie had a very high profile. Um, right now, Ruta Lee is our um, uh, boss in Meritus. She takes care of most everything. Um, I don't know if any of you remember the film in, uh, that she did with um, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. She was one of the brides. Um, yeah. She's also done so much television stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But she is... She's a force to be reckoned with, and she wants to make sure that we keep doing this. Um, I've been gratefully involved and so grateful that I was invited to be a part of it. Uh, so we're just trying to make sure that we take care of our re- re- returning vets in a, uh, because mental health is – it, people don't realize that you may look good on the outside, but on the inside you're hurting, and we want to make sure we take care yes. of that. We, wanna, we don't want to lose a vet to suicide or anyone for that matter, but um, that's what our primary goal is right this moment. Let's take care of our returning vets. Let's work with Operation MEND and uh, take care of the, the hurt on the inside. Absolutely. God bless. Now, yeah. I, saw, I saw an organization that uh, – did they donate two hundred thousand dollars to um yes we we do it like i think we i think we've donated we just finished donating two hundred thousand dollars we're going to donate another two hundred thousand dollars, so we try to raise money so we can do we're we're on like a uh, a conveyor belt of here's your two hundred thousand dollars in about three more four more months we'll give you another two hundred thousand dollars. Um, so that's what we try to do is to make sure that we're raising money so that we can give out that money. Um, and again, like I said, um, with the vets, you may look on the outside, but you need help on the inside. The things that we don't see, the PTSD, those kind of hurts that they go through, we want to make sure that they're all healed both physically and mentally. Now, God bless you for that. Do they have a website or um, a link that we, we can go to? Um, there is a website, the Thalians. I think it's Thalians.org. I'm not really sure because I don't have anything in front of me right this moment. But if you Google Thalians, you'll find the website that you can go to um, and talk to, and they'll tell you some events that will be coming up. I think we're going to be doing an event at the um, Hollywood Museum, um, w- which lets you go through that and see all the great stuff that's the history of the, the of Hollywood in that. And then we'll have a party upstairs and things um, so it, there's a number of events we try to get involved with. But you know what? I love the Thalians, and I want you to donate there. But please, anytime you can, Gary Sinise's company, Wounded Warriors, you know, we send these young men and women off to battle and defend our country and us, and we need to take care of them when they come back. Absolutely. And how do you spell Thank Thalians? You. Thank you for what you're doing. Um, I lost my brother. He's an Army veteran. So for you to do something like that is very special. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, sweetheart. I just think it's so important uh, that we take care of them. I mean, um, I, I listen, if somebody came to my house and I had a gun and you tried to rob me or hurt my dog or my husband, I'd probably shoot you. But I can't go overseas and do what these young men and women do. And, uh, again, we need to support them and take care of them when they come home. So, anyway. Absolutely. 
My second question is, and it's a little comical, how did you get by wearing that, that gray wig for so long? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I wish I could tell you that it was a wig. It was my own hair sprayed with this horrible gray. So it was oh, like wearing a helmet on my head. I, it was it was my own hair, spray gray, that I had, if I was working two or three days in a row, I had to keep it and not wash it. It was horrible. It was horrible. And then when I have my transformation and my hair is red, the first couple scenes that you see it red, they sprayed red into my hair. So now oh, I have no. a red helmet. As a, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's uh, oh the beautifulness of being an actress. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you didn't sweat. I hope you didn't sweat a lot because when you spray that stuff on, it's horrible. <laughs> uh, it, well, it was, honey. It was like a helmet. It, I turned it. My hair took ten more minutes to turn with me. So uh, it's just <laughs> terrible. Well, well, thank you very much. Oh, that's great. Thank great you. Pleasure. I, I, great pleasure. I have. I have to. T- I have to tell you that the hair guy had the worst job because he was trying, you know, I slip on my hair, I come in. He had to redo because we have to match. So if I did a show that continued for two or three days, he had to try to comb it out a little bit and recurl it back to match the day before. So he had the worst. Armando had the worst thing. He was a genius and so patient so as to not hurt my hair um, but make sure it matched for the show. Well, thank um, you for the uh, the heads up. Thank you we for never that. know what goes on. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Carolyn. Okay, You're next welcome. up we have Candace. No, it's no. Okay, Candace. Hi, Sophia, and I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I first wanted to say congratulations on the fabulous job hosting the Indie Series Awards this a uh, couple of weeks ago. You and yeah. Amy did a great yeah. job a great with job. that, and um, it was and, actually um, even was more special because um, I can now, this will be my trivia, you hosted the awards where I won for Best of Song for this past year. Aha, <laughs> uh-huh. very good. Congratulations. I think they're wonderful. I think, you know, people don't realize that, you know, we we, we glorify the Emmys, we have all these um, the Oscars and all these uh, the, it's, uh, SAG awards and things like that, but the independent series are generally yeah. um, they're they're basically financed by the performer um, and everybody involved. That t- you work for free uh, for the love of the art, and these these are such wonderfully put together series that um, uh, and several of them have gone from the independent series to be nominated for Emmys. Um, and so it's a wonderful thing. So congratulations on that. Um, I know that um, Roger Newcomb and Susan Bernhardt, who are the producers, put together a wonderful show, and um, uh, I, I was grateful to be a part of it. I've won several awards there myself for different independent mm-hmm. series that I've done, so I was very grateful to be asked to do it with um, my co-host. Yeah, you guys, it, it was and I've attended, I attended the fourth annual one back in the day when it was still in New York. So, and everybody on this line can tell you, I love the indie series. Like, they're, they're yep. such a creative, like, freedom that you see. And it's like, it's, it's, it's everything. Please don't sleep on it, folks. I keep telling people don't do it, but, you know. So you heard it. You know, I just, it, it's, it's such an opportunity for young creative people who want to create their own series. You know, if you've written something wonderful, then get with somebody that can direct and, you know, get a camera stuff. I mean, remember uh, years ago, I said, what, several years ago, an Oscar-nominated film, Tangerine, was shot on an iPhone. There's so That's many right. ways for you to be creative and to use the talents that you have and get them out there. And don't ever let anybody tell you you can't do something. If it's your soul and your soul and what you want to do, get out there and do it and don't let anybody tell you not to. So, But there's so many ways to create, put your creativity out there. I just I think that's the end of the interview. We should just end close that right there. <laughs> that's, that's, that's Come on, girl. Thank, thank you, darling. Thank you, darling. And everything. But I do have two questions. I do have two questions, so I'm going to go ahead. So I'm a okay. teacher, a child care teacher, 
And I enjoy hearing stories about that one or two special teachers who've made an impact on their students' lives. Do you have any teacher, teacher or teachers that to this day has made an impact on you and your life? <laughs> Gosh, it's, I, I've been out of school for so long, it's hard to say. Um, I do remember Mr. Vronich, fifth grade teacher in um, Milwaukee when I lived there. Um, he was... Um, he was enamored with the fact that I came from the South and said yes, sir, and no, sir, all the time. Um, but he loved when I did entertained in the, the talent show. Um, but at the same time, Miss Snyder and my sixth grade teacher there went, I don't think you should sing. You should just mouth it right now because you're not in the right key. So, so that prompted me to really start trying to figure out how to find the right key and understand that musically. So um, those are people that went on. Um, you know, I had, my mother was sending me to ballroom classes, and Mr. Litchfield, who was our seventh grade teacher at that time, had just gotten out of the Army, and he had had all of us doing cadence in the parking lot. So <laughs> there are certain <laughs> things that come to mind when I think about that. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, because of all of them, they they helped build you. They they and your mom. They all they saw something in you and said she's going to be a star. Well, I, I'm not sure if that ever happened, but yes, I mean it is something. Well, we know, you know, it, I, yeah. we know. They, yes. they, we they know. Cost, we know. They, thank you, thank you. But I think your teachers and your parents. You know, uh, listen. Sometimes my dad told me learn to type because you'll never be an actress. You know, because oh. he realized how tough it was. So he wanted to protect me. And so, you know, so a lot of times you have to do what feeds your soul. Your parents did what they did. They love you. They're going to support you. But don't let their, I don't want to say their bad things, but don't let their their mindset stop you from doing world. what you want to it's do. Like yeah. your, yes, yeah. don't, yes. Don't don't let them rain on your parade, more or less. You know, you can say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, and I understand, and yes, Dad, I'll learn how to type, but that's not what I want to do. Um, so you, right. you you also have to be your own person and, um, and, and do what feeds your soul. Again, Thank you. I think we should just end, end the interview because that was another word of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> like, Thank like, you. So we have now, this is like what? Well, today's Thursday, so I usually this would be good for Wisdom Thurs like Wisdom Thursday instead of Wisdom Wednesdays. So mm-hmm. there you go, folks. Make sure you listen, write that down, put it on your bulletin board, and just go by that. Okay. Well, so, as, I, I think honey, one of one of the things that I've always lived by is um, Henry Ford said, "Whether you think you can or you can't, you're right." Yep. I have that think on my about it. Too. Yeah, think it's about true. it. You know, yeah. and 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 you know, and Eleanor Roosevelt said, you know what? No one can make you feel less about yourself, you know, but you. So don't listen to other people. So, you know. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. We're gonna, have, we're gonna have you come back one day, and we're just gonna have you come with all this wisdom. Like you already do. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Too. A wisdom thank you. With thank you so job. much. Thank you. You know what? Call my agent. We're going to come up with a new TV show here. Okay. So, <laughs> speaking of, <laughs> you've done it all from comedies to digital, primetime, daytime. So, if a playwright were to say, Patrika, we want to make a Broadway musical about your life, here's the two questions for you. What would the title of the Broadway musical be? And who would you like to star as you in the musical? Oh, oh of course, I'm starring. Wait, whoa, dude, I'm starring as myself. Uh uh-uh, uh. Right? No way. Uh huh. Yeah. And it would have to be Look Out World, Here She Comes. So. <laughs> See? <laughs> That works. That it. so works. You came in and you <laughs> just took over. So yeah, that works. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I love well, it. Thank you so much for answering my questions. And you are just a joy. You're just a, a, a joyful. You know, I always say like the last couple of years. You know, all of us have gone through a lot, but you're just this bright spot in in the world, and we need more people like you. 
Thank you very much, and kudos to you for being a teacher, honey. You have one of the hardest jobs in the world. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Aunt, uh, Candace. Thank you. Okay, next up we have David, and then after David will be Anthony, and then we're done. <laughs> we don't want to keep you too okay. long. Okay. No okay. worries, no Hi. worries. Hey, Patrika. Hi, honey. Hi. I was. My first question to you is, when you won the role of Shirley Spectra on Bold and the Beautiful, were you, were you, yeah, were you um, familiar with the late Darlene Connolly? And how did you like <laughs> Courtney Hope? They were friends. <laughs> I listen, honey. Listen, I adore Courtney Hope. I would lay down in front of a train for her. She's such a wonderful actress and a wonderful human being. Um, I was so grateful to um, the Bell family to ask me to come and be a part of that storyline. Um, I will tell you that Darlene Connolly and I were good friends. Um, and when I got on the set, and I'm going to try not to cry now. Um, <sighs> Oh God! <laughs> when I got on the set, when we first went, when we first established the Spectra's place and we rebuilt it back up, the um, set decorators found pictures of of Darlene and I together at Aww. different events. There was a, one of them where we were on the piano together, singing on the piano. There were several other pictures where we were together as sisters. Um, it was um, so impactful. And such a wonderful thing for them to allow me to be a part of that family, but also to be related to um, uh, to Darlene because she was uh, something else. Um, and I'm so grateful that um, uh, they moved me uh, when Sally Spector, which is Courtney, got moved over to um, Y&R, that they let me come in for a couple episodes as her grandmother again as Shirley. So um, uh, it, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, if they asked me, I would go back in a heartbeat again, uh, again, because I love and adore Courtney, and it would be fun to work with her again. Uh, I'm sorry that the Spectro team fell apart and that we weren't there. Um, uh, it, it just was so much fun, so much fun. Yeah, I was oh. sad to see them leave, too, because it was such a ray of sunshine and even some comedy. And, you know, it was just a, a, like a break in all the drama that was going on. And such a thrill it, it, it to was fun. Darlene herself. They really wrote you and Courtney to throw back to, to, to Darlene and Sally. It, it, he, and I, like, I mean, I, I like Brad, Brad was amazing in how he did it, yeah. Absolutely. You, you look so much like you're related to each other in those scenes. So good kudos to both you and Courtney. You do both wonderful jobs. And I hope that they do bring you back over the y and It would be such a wonderful gift. Yeah. Everybody. Well, it would be a gift for me, and I, I would be very grateful and, and very happy to do it, always. Thank you. David, you had one more okay. question? I did. Patrick, I'm going to take you back a little ways. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Um, you starred in a presidential thriller called In the Line of Fire. And <laughs> yes. In the role in the role of Pam Magnus. So my question is, how was the atmosphere in there, and why did John Malkovich think you were supposed to be from Minneapolis? <laughs> well, in in the bank in the bank scene uh, when he's talking and opening his account, he does say something about Minneapolis, and I said, "Oh, I'm from there too." Well, which was immediately my death sentence, and that's why in my in my bio it always says, uh, "And Padua is the only one that should not have come from Minneapolis." Um, I have to tell you that. While I was doing that, I was also doing a stage show, and one of the young actresses who was uh, studying at UCLA said, oh, my God, Patricia, I'll kill you if I don't get to meet John Valkovich. Anyway, so I asked if I could have a guest on the set, and they let me bring her to the set. And John, who is an, uh, a consummate stage actor from Second City, all the stuff that he did, he spent an hour or so just talking theater to her 
Um, she he was so gracious and so kind. When we when we were working with the stunt coordinator to make sure that um, my roommate at the time, her name was Mary Van Arsdale. This was her first big film, and she spent almost the entire day being slammed into that uh, mantelpiece. Uh, that was <laughs> as my roommate. Oh, wow. uh, and then and then of course when I got killed, but. What John wanted to make sure, and we co- we worked with the stunt coordinator, was that when he turned my head to break my neck, that it would be on one, two, three, not one, two, and three, one, two, three, turn your neck, so that nobody would get hurt. He was the consummate professional about that. I did not work with Clint in that movie. However, he loved the scene in the bank that where I said I was from Minneapolis, and he, that's when John looks at me, then looks at the dog, and um, you know I'm up. It's all over for me. But <laughs> I, got to do mid, I got to do Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil with Clint. He directed me in that one. So. Oh, nice. That, that is amazing. I can't even that's imagine. Amazing. <laughs> wow. All right. Thank you, David. And last but not least, we have Anthony. Okay, uh, Pacheco. <laughs> yeah. So before I get into my questions, I think we all consider ourselves soap historians, Candace and I especially. And when it comes to comedy one-liners in soaps, I mean, you're going to go down for a bunch of different reasons in soap opera history. But when it comes down to one-liners, there is one that beyond a doubt sticks out to all of us. Myself, I have used this in conversations over the last couple of years, many, many times. And it was the scene where the Spectres were putting on the fashion show and Sally was torn between um, Thomas and, and doing a good job. And <laughs> Shirley smacks her and says something to the effect of, girl, this is not the time to worry about stuff in your hoo-ha. We've got to stuff your wallet. That is one of the best comedy <laughs> moments in soap operas in the last 20 years. Uh, 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 yeah, and you guys are better than I am. I don't quite remember that. So, uh, yeah, but don't worry about your hoo-ha, honey. Let's get your pocketbook full. That's the best <laughs> thing I can tell anybody. Yeah, yeah it, it, it was absolutely wonderful. So I'm, I'm going to bring it to, to the Nancy Craig conversation. I know that your partner in crime – who we have had on this show multiple times. Um, um, oh, God, why am I blinking? Uh, Spiritus, Kevin. Kevin Spiritus. Kevin, um, Kevin Spiritus, yes. So, you know, when, when all, was, all was said and done and you guys were coming back to Salem into the Days of Our Lives canvas, I have to ask, you know, Craig and Nancy, there have been other soap opera duos of the, you know, big girl and, and the hot guy. Uh, at least the five of us are considered Craig and Nancy to have been the, the ultimate of, of that storyline. Young and the Restless did it. It ended in tragedy. Uh, One Life to Live did it. It ended in, you know, bad feelings. But Craig and Nancy really made it. So when it came back around and, and you were going to tell this part of the story, A, between Craig and Nancy, but also between Patrika and Kevin, how did it feel? Well, you know, any time, I think in a relationship as a husband and wife, if there's a split and there's a thing going on, there's, you know, your heart breaks a little bit. Your heart breaks as the person you are, and then your heart breaks as the viewer looking in. Um, I, I did not quite know all the story that was going to happen. I was not that privy to the information. They just said that Kevin and um, – and, um, uh, Nancy are coming back, or Craig and Nancy are coming back, and I thought it was only coming in for nine episodes, I, uh, 13 episodes, I think my agent said they asked me to come back for. Um, we've been filming since September, um, and I think uh, our last shows are going to air in October, uh, so it's that far ahead that's going on. Kevin and I have been friends for over 20 years. Um, uh, even after we stopped with Days, we still have been friends doing things together, um, uh, so, uh, and listen, we talked to each other at different times. Uh, so, uh, listen, I was part of the uh, Emmy process when he was, his show that he wrote and starred in after forever. Um, I, you know, he I've supported him through that. Uh, he supported me through things. Listen, uh, 
uh, we talked about my singing and doing stuff like that. I'm still not real comfortable singing. And, of course, he made me sing in different, you know, the Wesleys did, the Wesleys on Broadway, the Wesleys Moulin Rouge, the Wesleys are taking off. And we were, had singing things, and Nadi would join us, and Kyle would join us, and different other actors would join us in, in some kind of big spectacular shows that we did for fans. Um, so he is like, um, he's like a brother. I love and adore him. And uh, so coming back, I think there's a lot of heartfelt when we're saying goodbye to each other. And um, when I, and I, I hesitate to say some things because I'm not sure where they, we are in the story right this moment. I don't think it's aired yet, so I have to be careful. But there are some touching things that were um, Nancy and Craig, but very heartfelt between Patrika and Kevin. So, wow. um, and wow. um, that, that's the most important thing is when you watch those scenes, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, that uh, when, when you start off as, as friends, um, uh, when you're playing certain emotions and you're saying goodbye to that friend or something's happened, that there is your heart hurts and it yeah. comes from your heart when you're playing those parts. Um, uh, and again, um, to be back with Nadia, Nadia was 18 years old when we started with her uh, on the show. Yeah. And, you know, she's now a mom with her own kids. And um, so it, it's it's family. I think that's one of the things the Corday family's always talked about is making sure that this is a, that, that the, his family was the most important thing. Um, it, even though it's, a, you know, there can be wackadoodle storylines with, the the devil and all these other crazy things that go on but basically everybody in the show likes one another and enjoys each other not just on the set but at different events thank you so much for asking that um answering you mean (laughs) (laughs) um So, you know, you alluded to when we first got on, you were a lady exec. I, I, you know, I followed your career for a very long time. I know that you've had various other jobs outside the industry. And then, you know, you've you've played with and played for Roseanne. You have been in primetime. You've been in feature films and, of course, daytime. So when you look back at the journey, all of it pulled in, what is the magic? Because there is no doubt in any of our minds, there's a magic to you. You sparkle, you shine, you make us laugh, you make us feel, you've made us cry. What's the magic? What's, what's your, your success? I, I think it's everybody's success. What I put out, I get back. So whatever you put out there, you're going to get back. Um, I, I take my technique from my classes that I've taken in college and high school um, and other classes that I've taken, um, uh, but basically I try to always be kind when I'm on the set. Um, the kindness doesn't cost you a dime, and it can come back to you threefold. There's times that I've been doing one, you know, one line on a show, but I was pleasant to get around with, and somebody said, bring her into this show, and I've gotten a job mm-hmm. that way. So um, the, the, the sparkle or whatever I have is I put out what I want to get back, and I get it threefold. And I can only encourage everyone to do that. Wow. Well, thank you so much for answering our questions and, and being yeah. here with us. You really and are that, one, of our, we're one of our dream guests. Uh, yeah, thank you and so actually, much. I had a fun time. Actually, <laughs> this is the second time you've been on our show. You were actually a guest almost 10 years ago. Um, yeah. I, 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 well, Anthony had said you were on the show once before, and I'm like going, mm-hmm. I think that was a while ago, though. Yes, yes <laughs> almost 10 years ago, because it'll be 10 years for us in November. And I believe you were in March of 2013 or May of 2013. You were March. here, so March, March yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, then, we well, thank then you. I had just, didn't, didn't I just finish doing a day's thing at that time? I believe Wasn't, so. Because I, I think I, I, can, I think I, I think that so. was when Nadia was in the hospital and she had yep. uh, she was carrying Nicole's child at the time. I think. Yeah. I'm, I mean, listen. Um, when you, I feel like I did a good job. That my storyline was over, 
but I was always polite and nice, and they were like, let's create another story and bring her back for this. So because I went back in, like, in 2007, then I was in 2013. Mm-hmm. I came back in 2016 just before I went over to do um, yeah, um, Bold and the Beautiful, um, and then suddenly I'm back again. But, again, it goes around to the fact that it, it doesn't cost you anything to be kind or to be nice. And I think for any young actor that I'm talking to or that may be listening right this moment, the casting director today could be the producer tomorrow. The secretary today could be the casting director tomorrow. You know, so be polite. Be nice where you go. Be prepared. Know what you're doing. Don't, um, you know, just do your work and do it properly. So. Absolutely, wow. and that that goes for anybody out there. You never know who your next boss is going to be, or whatever. You know what I mean? Or your next uh, in-law, even. You know? <laughs> no, that's true. And when you're driving your car and you want to turn yeah. around and flip somebody off and scream at them, just mm-hmm. kind of calm and take a breath and go, "Bless you. Have a good day. Don't crash into <laughs> anything. Bye bye. Go." Because you never know if you're going to go to that interview and that's the person sitting behind the yes. desk. So. Yes. You know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Well, thank it's you like so you, much you again. Got, thank you, right, so much again thank you guys, us. too. Thank you, and, thank you, and thank right. you for great Thanks. questions. I really appreciate it. Take care, and much more success. See you in another 10 years. Thank oh, you. Absolutely. Very much. Please thank come you. back thank again you. soon. We love you so much, Patrika. Uh, thank you. Anytime, you. anytime. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Patrika. Bye. Bye-bye, thank guys. You. Oh, that was good. She's you know, so we're really fun. blessed on this show. Yeah, she is so much fun. <laughs> and and every time, you know, we get wisdom. I, I remember back to Jacqueline Zeman and Laura Wright and, you, yeah. you know, just, oh, my God, Real Andrews. We get wisdom yeah. from these folks, you yeah, know, and, and, and we get to see behind the scenes. We get to see what the other actors and the, the crew and the writers, we get to see them for who they are. And, you know, some interviews, they're more guarded, absolutely, but interviews like this yeah. where they just put it all on the table for us, it, my God, I'm I'm filled with such joy and happiness I know. right now. I am too. I was so moved by her, by her talk about Darlene Connolly. I was, I was tearing up myself when she was talking about yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah, and I it's remember. Tough got, it's tough when you've got the five, what, five of us? Are there five of us? <laughs> and it's yeah. like, you know, the, the, the guest has to ask. Actually, or six answer with questions. me. <laughs> yep. Six of us. <laughs> Being on but, the you know, going back to her, <laughs> going back to her talking about Darlene for a second, I remember when Bolt was doing the anniversary specials around that same time, and they kind of went through how Patrika, you know, the, that in, in their friendship, Patrika and Darlene throughout the years, she was actually supposed to come on to Bold and the Beautiful. I don't remember if it was the late 90s or early 2000s, but she was supposed to come on as Darlene's sister, as Shirley, back then. Right. And for whatever reason, they scrapped that idea. And then years later, full circle, here she is. She <laughs> and so when they were oh. finding all those photos, they were finding it from their personal friendship. And wh- how amazing is that? How amazing yeah. is that to, to walk onto a set, you know, and play such a legendary character's sister and have right. that personal connection as well. We felt it. I know we felt it as fans. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And and you can tell how hard it was for her to be back there, but yet bring happiness too, because you bring back memories. Yeah. yeah. So, and you wow. get to celebrate someone. I always say this. Yeah. You know, one of the one of the the lights, the absolute brightest lights of daytime, does not get the recognition that she deserves. You know, Darlene, she's not forgotten, but she doesn't get. She's not she doesn't. Yeah, she's never gotten the 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 real accolades that that per, those performances, that character, you know, really really deserve. I mean, you know, think about all of the amazing stunts. That happens. All of the different mm-hmm. fights and, and and confrontations between her and um, her and Stephanie, aka oh Lord, my brain is not working tonight. <laughs> Stephanie in real life is Susan Flannery. 
Thank you. Susan yes. Lannery. Yeah, Got absolutely. Him. It was something about her with Darlene, the way she would say, Deacon Sharp. The way she said Deacon Sharp still to this day. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I can picture her as plain as day. She kind of ad lib that the way she said because you know it's supposed to be Deacon Sharp, but you know Dolly had to make it dramatic like a Deacon Sharp. <laughs> so now every time I hear Deacon Sharp, I do that voice. I have to do it, you know. And uh, Darlene. Yeah, may she rest in peace. You and Patrika changed the game. God I'm going to just say it. They changed the game for the landscape yeah. of soaps, how people saw soap characters, you know, vixens, you know. And you, you still – that was a great interview. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> but, you know, again, throwing back in her way, you, you know, that first round of Craig and Nancy really yeah. solidified mm-hmm. – you know, it solidified the the big girl and the the love that can that can happen, and that no matter what the outside looks like, it's it's what's underneath that the true. You know, they say the true attraction is in the brain, not in the body. Yeah. Um. You know, yeah. and, and and Nancy and Craig, they were the epitome of that. And no matter what's happening on canvas right now, that shaped that helped shape my life. It helped shape many people that I know. You know, when they looked at that day after day and said, you know what, it is possible. I don't have to look like Christy Brinkley or Julia Roberts to find my prince. And, right. you know, and, and that legacy means so much. Yeah, that's and so then, true. And then for us who grew up, again, growing pains, step-by-step, TGIF Fridays, that was a that was Girl, a day. Roseanne. That was come so. on, Roseanne. <laughs> she <laughs> out Roseanne's Roseanne. Yep. <laughs> That's a powerful All I know performer. Is when you can out talking. Roseanne, Roseanne. <laughs> yeah, it, it's crazy because while she was talking, and you know, a, again, you know, the teacher thing. I just remember her and Mr. Dewitt from Growing Pains, oh. and I, I'm telling you, it's. <laughs> It was one of those, like, flashbacks while you're, you, you know, listening to her. And, again, like I said, most of our listeners know her from the soap world. Some of us know her before, you know, the soap world. So, like, step by step, you know, I was playing that in my head all day today. Kid you not. I have no idea why. I, like, <laughs> went through the whole. We don't we don't have the rights to it, but y'all know the song. But yeah. And it's, it's just. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. And her own lady the lake and, and the bay and stuff. Oh my gosh! Like, I'm so. grateful to her because she's doing so much and she's always has been. But I'm grateful even more because, like she mentioned, that she is helping out on the veterans, which is definitely oh, very yeah. heartfelt and touching to me. I'm, mm-hmm. I I loved her and I've just enjoyed her. Like uh, all of you were saying, I grew up with her too. Like on Step by Step and a lot of different shows. It's just amazing. So just to, to interview is so great. I just want yeah. to apologize Scott. to the group tonight. Um, the questions I originally had was um, the reason I had to change it up was because I realized those are questions that she's been asked in previous interviews and I didn't want it to sound the same. So I had to change it up for just this time. So I apologize. Okay. No worries. Um, Fine. It worked out. It worked out. Yeah, you stepped on Carolyn's toes on that one. She had one of those questions. So, um, but that's yeah. all right. We all got through it. There's a million questions to yes. ask anybody. Yes. But I wanted to yeah. say I, that you know, with mm-hmm. um, you know, growing up with Patrika and so many roles that we all watched her in, and Don and I also got to interview Michael Gross, and I grew up mm-hmm. watching Family Ties. And that, Son you know, I, I I understand when we have somebody that's not just only doing soap opera roles, that, but somebody that you grew up with, it, it mm-hmm. even plays with your mind more. You know what I mean? It, it means even more to you because you never thought as a kid watching somebody on TV that you would grow up later in life and be able to actually talk to them. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. 
it's a weird universe. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, again, like you said, you know, many of the guests that have been on here, they've been in other shows that yeah, we grew news. up watching or, you know, and to to be able to talk to everybody and, and just kind of not completely fan out. Y'all know right. I did good this time. I did really <laughs> good. I could have I really went there. Okay, I should. I could have. I could have really went there. But it's it's just it's it's one of those things, like you said, Pam. You know, and this this is to all of our listeners. If you have a dream, don't give up on it. Seriously, if there's a dream guest that you want to talk to, you know, you never know. It's going to exactly. Happen. I mean. I'm just gonna say, how many? How many? I've I've been on this show for a long time, and what was the thing I kept saying? I want to win an award. I want to win an award. I want to be on the sofa. I want to. And you know, not only do I get to do this and talk to fabulous people with my fabulous friends, but dreams do come true. So, if you're listening, like the speaker said, don't give up. You know. Right, absolutely. All right. Um, yeah, we've got I had to, to I had to be talked into doing this show to tell you, you know, a, a lot oh. of people don't a lot yes, a lot of people didn't don't know that, but Dawn and and a few other people talked me into me. starting the show after um I was no longer co host on another show. Um mm-hmm. and I I am outgoing but I'm introverted if that makes sense I know a lot of people are that way and so I was terrified to do it by myself I can't I'm like nope 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 <laughs> and so then finally Don I you know she said okay well I'll do it with you would that be better or something and then to this day I'm so grateful to her because these past 10 years we've had just for the daytime actors alone, we've had almost 175 of past and present wow. daytime actors yeah. that we've spoken yeah. with. And um, non-daytime, you know, we've had quite a bit. We don't do those so much anymore, but we, we've we had uh, at yeah. least 100. I know we've got, like, over 500 shows and they're not just us talking about soaps, you know, so it's pretty much the majority of them have been interviews and I'm, I'm glad that I stuck with it, but I'll tell you at at times when there's certain actors that come on for an interview, my stomach is just like in knots until, until I start talking because I have like, I'll t- one of them is Vincent Irizarry. I absolutely That's love him. That's should get out the queen sickles. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we Pam, but here's the thing. You know, I worked for the Associated Press for 10 and a half years, and, and I covered Friends and, and Emmy Awards, Grammy Awards. The only thing I didn't cover was the Oscars. I covered everything else. But that pit in your stomach, it never really goes away. You know, your, your yeah, brain right. no, tells it your doesn't. stomach, you've done this a hundred times over. You know, you're good. And, you know, and then, and then someone like, so for me in this show, the one, the one person that we've had that made me like absolutely lose my mind was Laura Wright. Um, mm-hmm. and, okay, there's, actually there have been two, Miss Laura Wright and Miss Andrea Evans. I think even just a tiny bit more, Andrea, because I was a kid. I, I remember yeah. her going over the falls. I remember her stumbling through the church. Yeah. I, you know, and so, you know, I really had to work to keep myself composed. And I'm mm-hmm. saying to myself, you interviewed Mar- – you spent four days straight with Mariah Carey. If you can hang out with that not-so-cuckoo, you know, 45 <laughs> minutes with Andrea hey. Evans is going to be a breeze. <laughs> Yeah, and you know what? What I mean, you start out with that knot in your stomach, but for me, once I start talking, I'm okay because yeah. I have to just, yeah. you know, yeah. because they come across as a human just like you are, and it makes right. it so much easier to get through it. But in, I, I'm trying to remember who Don and I were were interviewing, and I had to. Ed Asner. No, well, 
No. I mean, that was huge, Ed Asner. That was a huge yeah. knuckle grinding, bite your nails, stomach thing, you know, to, to interview because he's huge and uh, royalty. I'm so, so, That's yes, what he is. He's yes. royalty. I'm so, so glad that we got to speak to him before he passed. The other one is, is, um, Gavin. What? Was it Gavin? Oh, Gavin McLeod. Gavin McLeod. Yeah. Gavin McLeod. Um, but, uh, Jeannie Cooper, Man, oh, God, I am yes. so grateful, and Krista St. John, I am so, so grateful that we got to interview him. I wish you guys would have been around at that time. I mean, those are, are interviews that I'll never forget. And for yes. our listeners, you can still listen to those if you go to blogtalkradio.com and get to Good Take job. Two Radio um, with the number two. And, look, we have so many interviews. Oh, and, and Michael Easton and Roger Haworth. Oh, oh God. Hello. Oh, yeah. oh God. You was yeah. a nervous wreck. It was I'm <laughs> you. The topic Michael of, and Roger. While you're oh, on the topic gosh. of being grateful, I wanted to add that I'm grateful to all of you for welcoming me when Pam reached out to me and I don't know what it was. She reached out to me and joining you guys, it's definitely changed so many perspectives in my life and so many possible new uh, beginnings. So thank you so much to Pam and to you, the group. Um, I've never been welcomed before in this kind of way. Uh, as Pam's mentioned, I was also a co-host on another radio too, and we weren't treated that way from anybody. So to be in such an amazing group like all of y'all, it's such a big deal. So thank you to everybody. You're welcome. Oh, we're, you're we're, welcome. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're so glad group. to have you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've got, I've got, I'm sorry, i got to cut short because i got to help my daughter with her um, school project for the summer. But I've just got two quick things, so just bear with me. First is I'm going to be taking my vacation with the family April 4th through the 10th. So I'll definitely miss everybody in case you do any uh, shows during that time. And I am April not empty handed. May. <laughs> April May 4th. 4th. 10th. May. I mean, yeah, I get my dates confused. That's all um, right. And then the second all right. one. Okay. Hold on. Second one is uh, I got an exclusive daytime casting news for you. And it is confirmed. Steve Burton is joining the five-episode Days of Our Lives daytime event of Beyond Salem Season 2 this summer on Peacock under the guise of a mysterious character. No, well, just, I just, can, just bear I with can me. answer yeah, bear that. With me. Yes, bear with Go me. I've got, I've got the backup story for y'all. In 1988, he was a minor, he was in a minor yes, role. I remember. He portrayed the teenage yes, character sorry. named Harris Michael, who began yep. dating Eve Donovan, original Charlotte Ross, Donovan's yep. dad, Sean Donovan, was played by Charles Shaughnessy. He currently is the role of Victor Cassidyne on General Hospital. Well, I I can piggyback on that information. Yeah, we yeah, spoke about ahead. something last week, um, and yes. one of those two mysterious couples involves Steve Burton. So we will be getting a female counterpart to Steve's announcement in the next couple of days, and I would love to to hear who our listeners think they might be reuniting in Salem under, of course, different characters, but, um, you know, it could be Alicia Lee Willis. It could be, well, you know, it could be a couple of different folks, but we will be seeing someone from the Jason Orbit joining the Beyond Salem cast in the next couple of days. Exciting, exciting. Yes, Very yes. exciting. Right, gotta go. But just to add one last thing, you can also remember Steve Burns started out in a very original comedy. It was called Out of This World. So check it out. It's available on Pluto TV. Bye, everybody. That's, All right. Bye, Will. That's right. Thank Bye, you. Will. Evie's boyfriend. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, Pam, we are so glad to have you back with us for a second week in a row. What soap do you want to chat about first? Well, let's just go in the order we normally do. And the, well, you know, Carolyn's here, so let's start with days. Um, did everybody watch today's episode? I didn't. Uh-huh. I did. Up to date for yesterday. I did not watch today. If anybody wants to give me spoilers, that is absolutely fine. Okay, Candace, I didn't hear you. Did you? 
I did. Okay. And Carolyn, you did? No, I was so busy today and I didn't have time. Oh, look, I don't want to hear excuses, woman. (laughs) (laughs) You sound like my daughter. You sound like my daughter. She gave me hell tonight. You didn't see days? And you're doing the show. What's the matter with you? Most of the stuff I was doing for her. <laughs> well, honey, I'll I'll give you my excuse straight up. I was writing an article that I'm actually getting paid for. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, there you go. I will uh, watch. I will watch today's Days General, and I got to see Bulls and the Beautiful, but I didn't see Y and R. I didn't see the other three. So I will watch okay. everything tomorrow and double up. But you can spoil all you want. What's going on, Days, Pam? Well, Candace, Candace. <laughs> you Candace, Pam do it because see Pam. I want Pam to do it, and then I'm going to do the reactions. I want to do the reactions yep. to, to all these storylines. Okay. Well, the, okay. the thing the thing is, um, there was a party going on in that tomb. <laughs> it wasn't a mm-hmm. good party. <laughs> there was a party. <laughs> so now we have Ben and Johnny. And then Andre showed up, and Andre is trying to talk Ben into killing Johnny uh, and got that little old scarf out for him to do it. So, yeah, not a good thing, but Ben uh, Ben tried, but then he couldn't do it, which I had a feeling he wouldn't be able to do it. Um. But then it ended with Andre saying, well, if, you know, basically, if you're not going to do it, then I'm going to do it. So he was going towards Johnny. So we don't know what's happening there. So out of all that, who do you think, because I have my thoughts on who's going to find Ben and Johnny before it's too late. And I'm, I thinking, have a hunch too. I'm thinking that it's going to be um, Jake. Who do you oh. guys think? Um, hmm. No, that's not my guess. I was guessing Anna. Anna, okay. That's okay. Because I was thinking so Susan. Susan. Now, Susan's, Susan's a good Susan. choice, too. Yeah, Susan. but I, I'm thinking, the only reason I'm thinking Jake is because he knows, in you know, with these dreams and such, you know, maybe it'll be a couple of them, like Jake will uh, um, go with Susan or something. Who knows? You know what I mean? Right. That he's starting to remember that Johnny was the one that was possessed. Mm-hmm. The reason I'm thinking Anna, or at least Anna's going to be someone who stumbles into this, is because, you know, it's the classic soap kind of fair. You know, she's the one who's still in the la-la land, so to speak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Susan also, you know, I, I mean, listen, whenever they use Susan and however they use Susan, I'm going to applaud. applaud. Um, Is it Stacey? So, you know, it's Stacey, absolutely. Um, Stacey Heideck. But also, you know, she's been on the fringes of finding the information out just as somebody else finds it out up to this point. So it definitely makes sense that Susan would be at least among the people coming. If, right, you know, if it turns out to be she, kind of a group thing, she went to go lay down today because um, she's being talked into believing that what she's feeling or premonising that she that it's not real that that's it can't, it couldn't be Johnny, but when, and so when she went up to the bedroom, she found the red jacket. Remember the red jacket Johnny was wearing? The red jacket. Uh-huh. Okay. So, so yeah. she laid down and, you know, she was getting all of these premonitions and stuff like that. So she's double guessing her double guess. So, you know, she mm. could definitely be part of it. Candace, you're too quiet. Speak up. <laughs> I'm not, I'm just, okay, so here's my reaction. I do think it's Jake um, that's yeah. going to find Yay! them because, <laughs> because the thing is, is that Dave is really pushing for that bromance with Jake and Ben, mm-hmm. um, sort of reminiscent of John Black and Patch. Right. Just saying. Um, it may it's not be working buddy. for some people, but that's okay. Yeah, it's his buddy. Yeah, it's his buddy. Yeah. He wants to know um, where he is. Okay. 
Yeah, and when Susan laid down, she said, oh, sweet baby Jesus. Yeah. I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, She uh-huh, makes girl. me mm-hmm. laugh so much. She makes me laugh. I yeah. love seeing her. I actually prefer seeing Stacy as Susan than as Kristen. <laughs> me too. Yes. Yes. Me too. Yeah. Not that, you know, not that she's, ever... you know, she plays a great Kristen. Don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't want that going out there. No, but if they ever, you know, decided to re up, you know, the the Susan versus Kristen, um, you know, matchup, I would love love to see Stacy and, and I go at it, yeah, for mm-hmm. a couple of scenes. But wait, but wait, and then we come back. Let's so let's say they end it on a Friday with you know they're about to like throw down, slap each other up, et cetera, et cetera, and then we come back on Monday and it's role reversal. <laughs> No. I mean, Susan and Stacy is Kristen. I, yeah. I would kill. I would I, no. Okay, I would never kill anyone. I wouldn't uh-huh. even kill an animal. All right, I would. I would kill a bunch of mosquitoes and then eat them <laughs> to see that to see that that go down. That Susan, uh, Stacy is Susan. Eileen is Kristen on a Friday. You know, and give them the bulk of the show. You know, every single commercial break they've got a scene, and then come back on Monday, and bam, it's switcheroo. Hello, Freaky <laughs> Friday on Monday. <laughs> that would be good. You got quite the imagination there, Anthony. That's a good one. And then when oh, they I, open up on I, Tuesday, they rip off masks and they go back to being oh, who they were on Friday. <laughs> oh God, not the mask. No, no more masks. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, when I when I was at an event with uh, Stacy, she described uh, that makeup and the teeth. Uh, just having those teeth in and how many hours preparation and then her voice. I mean, that, that, she does a fabulous job. I mean, the, the transformation is unbelievable. But she yeah. said that's tough. The, yeah. those, those buck teeth. <laughs> they have a life yeah. of their own. And then you know, speaking we of ta- Jake... I was going to say, mm-hmm. speaking of Jake, you think there's going to be a Jake and Ava pairing? You think that's what they're going towards? I, I rose that that possibility last week because it just seems like they're at least testing, they're testing, you know, the chemistry to see. Um, you know, there's history. There, it, it would be a really interesting pairing to play with. That's all I. Um, I, but I like. I'm in the minority. I like Jake and Gabby. I, I oh do. no, 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 no! You're not in the minority because I do like them too. I I prefer Jake with oh, Gabby. Oh. Mm-hmm. The fans, the fans on the uh, on the pages on on Facebook for me, the the groups they they love Ava and, and Jake. They're liking the pairing. So yeah, yeah. It could be a curse I, because I, then they when they like them, they don't they don't keep them together. Well. <sighs> This is how I feel about Ava and Jake. I feel as though they're doing what they did with Gabby and – not Gabby, but um, Gwen and Xander. They just put yeah. them together and hoping that it works. And you have two talented actors who can make it work. But I just – for me, I don't see it. Unless you're going to have – no. A, it be somebody is plotting against somebody, using somebody. I mean, they got gangster blood and um, they got mob life forever. I I just don't I don't see it. And as far as Jake and Gabby goes, oh no. And uh, I, look, great great. It's this curse. It's this curse that still have. When you kill the original one part of the original pairing off, and then you bring uh-huh. the actor back. And they try to do the twin thing. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And this is one of those times it doesn't. You see, I kind of oh, disagree I like with you, them. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and I disagree well, with you for this question. reason. Do you like them because of what you saw previously, or do you like them for what they are now? Now. I see, okay, and I disagree with that. It's a, it's a mix for me. It's a mix of both. Um, <laughs> I was going like to say we might all is, have it in our heads a little bit about the past too. So we do, yeah, absolutely. I do too. 
what I like about this time around is they took their time. They didn't immediately right. shove Gabby and Jake down our throats. They took their right. time to get back to it. And who these two people are, are similar to who Gabby and Stefan were, if you really think about it. Mm-hmm. You, you know, Stefan was still an outsider at that point. Stefan right. was still the outlier. And Gabby is still trying to cement a place that makes her, you know, uh, uh, one of the town old guards or one of the town, you know, memorable figure. I, I'm not saying it right, but you know what I mean? She wants yeah. that solidifying yeah. position. So it's the same story, same actors with one character that's different, but at least they took their time to come around back to it. Now, real quick about Ava and Jake. The one thing that the two that, that makes it interesting about the two of them is they both have skeletons that they really don't want to air out. They both are in a process with their in the redemp, the redemption part of their journey. They've already convinced enough people that you know there's as much good in them as there is bad and evil, et cetera, et cetera. And they both still have secrets that we don't know about yet. So putting them together, you know, and combining the redemption tours and then having one or if not both of their, you know, their lives off screen come into Salem to take it down is definitely going to be good TV. So if they are doing this and, they're, and they are really going to invest in, in Ava and Jake, then give us a really slow burning but hot fueled romance and then drip out whatever the side sto- not side story, but whatever the backstory Back that you guys find in between yeah. them. That book. Give us a really, really hot and heavy redemption romance before you start to pull it apart. That yeah. was what, and Candace, I think you'll admit this too, that was what went wrong with Xander and Gwen. Xander and Gwen could have actually been a really hot button couple if they continued to play the redemption storyline between both of them and left what was going to come to be a huge shock all at once. Candace, you, you, you kind of get what I'm Ooh, saying here? I do. See, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this about Gwen, because I think I've been the president about this. I... Mm-hmm. I Dave fans, I love you guys. You know this, but we all fell for it. Well, not me. Um, that not me either, girl. To make Gwen that heroine or that likable character that you start to feel bad once you realize that the walls were closing in on her. And you compare her to Xander. And, yes, I had a problem when Xander had told Gwen, you must be, you, you are the most, uh, meanest person I've ever met. And I was like, really, Xander? Yeah, you know? what about Kristen? And <laughs> yeah. no, I, you know, I was, I was thinking about Xander. Yeah. I was thinking yeah. about Xander. Yeah. I was about Xander. I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things where, again, that's why I'm probably looking at this, you know, if they do do the Ava and Jake where you're going to have two people who, like you said, do have a lot of mess in their closets. But are they going to try to make the audience side with one over the other when the reveals and stuff comes out? Let's see if they build it up that the audience, the audience sides with them as, as the next right. super couple. Whether things come out from one side, both sides, you know, it's going to be impactful. They have a, they have a great chemistry. You cannot deny that the chemistry yeah, between that, them is that good. You can definitely you can tell. It's just they story both has to they match both up. can handle material. You know, so whatever they throw at either one of these and both of them together, they can handle the material. So instead of giving the what I think that soap operas and and most especially days lately, what I think they're doing wrong is. They're giving us, as the audience, too much information. Yeah. And so we're getting mm-hmm. frustrated because we know the information and we're waiting for the big, you know, the big comeuppance, so to speak. And then when the big comeuppance comes, it's never going to be down. big enough because we've been sitting – exactly. Like, you, you know, take it over to General Hospital for just a second. Harmony, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's not the impact that it would have been if they didn't throw clues at us for the last two years on how this storyline was going. 
I will give GH one pat on the back. The fact that Harmony killed Neil, they kept that. Oh, Lord, did they keep that. When that came out, I think it was on a Wednesday, that we got that first flashback. It was like, what? What? It's a Wednesday. This is not Friday. What is going on here? Other than that, though, the rest of the story, they have spoon-fed us. So there's not, the, there's not that much impact. And so putting these two characters together, knowing that there's so much history between them that we don't know, and your own personal histories that we don't know, even though Ava, Patch, et cetera, et cetera, two kids, all, you, you know, there's still enough in their histories that we don't know. Build them together on the redemption tour. Make them the ones that we want. And then throw something yeah. at us and, and make us feel it and really feel it. Yeah. I like the, well, th- I like the threesome. I like Gabby, Ava, <laughs> and Jake. And that's the oh, direction. I, I think the two of them, Ava and Gabby, when they go at it, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, God, yeah. Fun. Perfection. Yes. Perfection. Yes. As you long know, as Mara- they got that, they have- Gabby is jealous, and oh boy, that 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 she's gonna go to the nth degree to get him back. <laughs> that's that's what I was just gonna say, Carolyn. Is that I think that they're doing this Ava Jake thing to get Gabby to go back to being the crazy person that she is, um, and she'll do yeah. anything to get Jake back, and that's gonna give it storyline. Yeah, because the uh, Ava, Ava yeah, and Ava. and Gabby showdown and that is gonna be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially with the revolving door of Abby's. So there has to be somebody yeah. for Gabby to play against. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So, um, so. there's more that, that I'd like to talk about on days, but we're at the uh, 30 minute mark here. So, um, uh, can we talk about the baby? I was, well, I was going to say we can go through you know, a couple more things but a little quickly but yeah the baby what is the baby what does the devil really want with that baby oh to go into to grow up to change you know to yes. Yes. take over the yes. world yeah yes. they it's so if you look okay. at if you look at religion. these kind of folklore stories the the devil needs an innocent soul a soul that has no no marks on it to kick the soul out of the physical body and possess. It, it can't be done even in a one-year-old child because a one-year-old child at that point has too many memory experiences. That's the folklore of how this all works. So the way they're playing it, it seems to be the, ba- the devil needs that pureness to eradicate that soul and take that baby so that it can, he can come into the world as the anti, the reverse Jesus, right, right. basically. Mm-hmm. Well, remember, but remember what they say: the baby is, a, is was born of a mixture of pureness with the Sierra and evil, which was bad, right? Because of the bloodline. Exactly, so, and it's the the take of you know, does the devil have enough power to make the the over the the, the evil side of that baby take over? To outweigh the, the good, exactly. Yeah, and that's 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 what that's what they're setting up. Hopefully, you, you know, we actually get to. I'd rather see that than see some kind of weird foible, and then the devil is in the shadow somewhere waiting for his next turn. I'd rather see this play out with with the whole baby, even well, if the baby's possessed for a while. Because if they play it out where oh, they kind of vanquish the devil this time, but he's still in the shadows and he's got another chance, I think a lot of people are going to be up in arms about leaving the story off that way. Yeah. Well, well there's another baby. There's another bun in the oven that you're not thinking about. And yep. the well, oh, that I mean, baby. It's a culture good Sierra. <laughs> well, here, okay. So I think they're not going to do what we think they should have done. Of no, swapping the no. babies because no. <laughs> Sierra's more no. far along. Which doing the math, I was like, wait a minute, hold up. So Jan is pregnant on her own. Right. Notice I said that on her own because I don't think on that's on baby unless they do. I'll, I'll get back to that in a minute. But with Sierra, with her baby, so real quick, I want to because I really want to talk about this. So Sierra, you know. 
was drugged, as we all know, sleepy sleepy tea that her cousin Allie gave her, aka Al Devil. And then she, you know, of course, drugged Ben. And somehow, right. some way, Allie got Ben into the chamber. Okay, y'all figure this one out. All right. So Pierre is wondering where, you know, is you know, trying to figure out where Ben is and all that stuff, you know. And she got raised to get the cops and Jake came over and all that stuff. Well, Meanwhile, Allie, she's a little bit busy. She's a busy devil. Get it? I'll be here all night. Um, yeah. She goes to the prison to see, to see Evan. Y'all remember Evan? Yep. Remember yep. Evan. <laughs> he, 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 he cute. And so Allie is, like, explaining her reasoning why Ben is not going to be a good dad. And Evan says, wait a minute, let me get this straight. So you – want me to kill Ben Weston? And she said, yeah, you'll have a partner. And Evan is like, well, who's my partner? All of a sudden, lights go out. And if you're like a wrestling <laughs> fan, it's sort of like The Undertaker when the lights went out. Yep. Okay. Uh-huh. And then next thing you know, he sees yellow eyes saying, it's mm-hmm. me. Yep. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Jake was at Ben and Sierra's place, right? Allie comes out, right? And Evan, Evan came over. And Jake recognized who Evan was. And Evan was like, oh, don't worry. Me and Sierra, we're cool. We're friends now. And next thing you know, Jake got knocked out. (laughs) And then Sierra comes home and sees Evan standing over Ben. No. Right. That tie and all. That, that, uh... That okay, is, but hey, do you think that was a mask? Well, not a mask. I'm trying to think. A morph? Uh-uh. No, no, it was not a morph. No, so that's really Ben, you're saying? Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay, I was fooled. <laughs> I, 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 Let's just say okay. that this is going to get real interesting if they play it a certain way. Because I'm Candace, let me ask some you this: huh? Are you thinking? Are you thinking if they play it a certain way, aka Jan's ba- Jan's real baby daddy? No, I'm not even thinking about Jan. Because oh, you should. But go ahead. Oh, okay. okay, so here's here's the thing: fans who watch Dave for the last twenty years, please understand where this is coming from. Do you guys remember when Dan was pregnant, but Belle caused the miscarriage? Yes. Yeah. I okay. Was. I can't remember. So, if you're a fan of Days of Our Lives, when Nicole and Jennifer, or the famous Annie Dutton and Reva Shane Lewis on Guy and Light, that's where I think we're going to go at with Dan. I feel as though Dan is going to set Belle up again to make her lose that child. And Seth was going to worm Van and Sean together while Belle and EJ hook up. I see hmm. Belle and EJ hooking up, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was my other thought, too, yeah. So, Candace, you are two-thirds right, and the third that you're not right, um, you're pretty close. So you're kind of on the same page with I need with Belle to I'm recreate thinking. her mama, okay, in Titan Ballroom, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Jan's baby daddy is going to actually matter. That's all I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. And, and not next week, not next show, but the show after that, I guarantee you we'll be talking about this again, and y'all be saying, remember what you said, Danny Anthony? Oh, wow. I didn't imagine <laughs> this was going to happen. Right. But I see it so clearly. I see exactly what's going to happen. And, Candace, you're on the you're on the right path, too, big time. Well, you know, it, you know, sometimes it pays to be a soap fan. Um, and, you know, a soap writer sometimes, you know, brilliant, brilliant comes out, it flows, you know. If I was doing a soap, I would have done that. Yeah. All right. Now, what, one well, other I, thing I, I one other thing I want to bring up about Dave's before we move on is why bring Greg Vaughn back for a minute? Because he's hot. Because he. Yeah, well, hello. He was another no, one no, that no. It was Google Gaga right before I interviewed too. But, um, you know, I love. No, honey, him. he'll be back. 
He'll be what? back. What? He'll be back on here? He'll be back on Take Two Radio? No, he'll be oh. back on this. <laughs> I, well, I knew that, but I just... Anthony, you totally <laughs> messed this up for me. <laughs> because he mentioned right, that I'm he gonna... was only in Salem for a short while, so that's why I said that. Why bring him back when it doesn't seem like that there's going to be a big storyline uh, you know, other than maybe him, you know, getting the devil out again. Yeah. No, no, no. Is he? I don't know. No, you know, that's why, it, that's where, that's where Jan comes into the picture. Um, uh-huh. Maybe, so maybe uh-huh. I shouldn't say, no. but Jan has something on, um, on Eric. Eric. And there's going to uh, be a no. whole, there's going to be a whole thing going on there. Pam, trust me. Um, Eric isn't going anywhere. It was storyline purposes that he said that about being in Salem, but the character of Eric is in for a couple of months of his world is going to be shook upside down. Then you're going to stuff him into like a box and shake that box up, kick it around a couple of times. Then they're going to turn it upside down and dump him on the floor. (laughs) Think about, Eric is going to probably be tied to that Sarah storyline. And the reason I say that is because of where Sarah is right now, mind-wise. Uh-huh. And, yeah. and what she drew. Eric loves Sarah. Because, you know, back in the day, they uh-huh. were little kids, you know, that. Yeah, she had a that, crush on him. I already, I already, yeah, yeah, I already knew that like that, that was going to be a thing. As soon as I saw that, I was like, okay. Don't you dare tell me that he's part of Jan's baby's life. You know what? Can we move on before I – because I can't. I can't. Babe, I, I, I wish I could tell you I okay. wish I could tell you that, but I can't tell you that. But I can tell you that he's going to be in three distinctive storylines that will all coincide at points in time, but he's in three separate storylines. He's going to be around, and he's going to be busy. He's got okay. a lot coming. Well, that's good, good to know. I don't – I don't – I don't read spoilers, so that's good to know. <laughs> yeah, I'm just speculating. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. You know what, Ron? We'll talk later on Twitter. That better not be the case. I'm supposed to have a conniptive face. Y'all need to see my face right now. Well, let's oh, move honey, on because wait. we got 25 we minutes. On. We got 25 right. minutes. Or actually, less than that, I think. But, um, Speaking, because since you brought up Harmony with uh, General Hospital, I, as well as other people I saw on uh, social media, are highly disappointed they did not wait for the scenes yeah. for Nancy, Ma- Nancy, Lee Grant, Nancy. Nancy Lee Grant to come back to do those. Nothing against the actress that's temporarily playing her, but this is Nancy's story. Yeah, it is. Okay, I agree with you, but uh, Nancy Lee Grant herself on Facebook said that she congratulated Stephanie Irv for being able to step into that storyline and to and right. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with and her, that's, and that's great. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with her, you know, taking over the role because with the Nancy's acting, out because just... of her back, and her acting is is great. But that's Nancy's. That was Nancy. I, you know what? Deal. I'm, I'm going to was... look at this. I'm going to look at this from the ki- the kind of soap fan who says to himself, "I know that they the soaps are literally hanging on by strings each year. So right. if they changed their shooting schedule, et cetera, et cetera, because of Nancy, it would have cost them a couple of thousand dollars each scene, whatever, whatever. You know, you're talking under- about tens no, of thousands of dollars. No, I understand all of that. I understand that. I really do. The common sense in me tells me all of that. I understand all of that. We're just disappointed. That's all. We're, because I'm because disappointed, I mean, too. But then I say to myself, more? wait, Candice, let me just say this, because I, I think it's important. I am disappointed, and I wish upon everything that I could have seen Nancy play the destruction of her belief in harmony in those scenes uh, yesterday. I, absolutely, I am so with you. I absolutely agree on that. But if, that, if the difference between General Hospital having 62, 65, 66 anniversaries, you know, if, if that's the piece that makes the difference, I'll take them have doing what they have to do. And I will try to enjoy – I look mm. at it – I think Stephanie did a great job. She studied 
Nancy's Alexis and tried to give us her best Alexis that she could give us. It wasn't Nancy, but right. she did a pretty damn good job. And so when all is said and done, I really wish it was Nancy. I'm sorry, Nancy, that you didn't get the kudos to you for going on Facebook and saying that the, the woman that did it did a good job and you can't wait to see what the fan reaction is. I thought that was so classy. I'm sorry yeah, I got you off, Candace, but I wanted to finish that thought before we no, go to the, the I, other side. That was Pam. No, because I, 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 I had jumped in, um, and I apologize for that. Oh. I think I agree with, with I agree with both sides because I understand when you do not have the original actress, you still got to film these scenes. You, you got a tight schedule. Right, However, right. we all understand that. Fan, mm-hmm. Yeah, as a fan point of view, I agree. You built this up with Nancy. For me, when I saw the reveal, it kind of felt, and it's nothing against the actress, it felt flat because I felt as though I was watching, I was just watching two new, a newbie. Like, like it took, it, it, it took away. It wasn't as impactful. It wasn't as impactful. Right. It wasn't as impactful. Okay, like, okay, I feel that from you guys. You know, when they yeah. do flashbacks, when they, if they do flashbacks and Nancy is there, I'm pretty sure because we've been on the ride. It's sort of like, okay, can you imagine if what happened on Young and the Rock with Sharon and Nick happened with, um, no offense, with Pam and Joshua Morrow? I mean, Pam, we would love you in those scenes. So, but it was, but you know what I mean? It, it's kind of, mm-hmm. it just didn't feel. But you know what, Candace, and I feel you, I really do because. I did the, – the the other side of my brain was saying, oh, my God, Nancy would have killed this. But I challenge yeah, you would've. to go to, – wait, I challenge you to go back and watch it from the perspective that I'm saying. Okay, Nancy gave her seal of approval. This was what they had to do. This lady oh, yeah, really I, put I totally the work understand. in. It, they, it could be that almost as impactful as if it was Nancy. Oh yeah, I told I like I said I only understand both points of it. I really did. And total um, shout out by the way to Ingrid. Oh my God, there were a couple of scenes over the last couple of years where her acting chops really came out, but not really for the entire of her run. She's been a one note kind of character. She's had moments, but okay. And then from the time we had that first flashback moment where we saw her inject into Neil. Her performances yep. have been incredible. Ingrid, if you are listening, KQ Radio, or at least Anthony of KQ Radio says, girl, you need a nomination. And if you get a nomination, I will scream your name until they vote you into getting the award. Kudos. <laughs> you really gave us some great performances, Ingrid. That I'm sorry. Awesome. I will shut up now. <laughs> is she on Twitter? Is she on Twitter? I think she yeah. is on Twitter. Yes, she is. There you go, Anthony. Get in there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I think she has done incredible work. I am so all. I am so into harmony. I know she's going to go down. I'm not exactly sure, but I, no, I, of course I'm sure. I know she's going to go down, but I am so into harmony. She plays a really good distressed psycho woman. Yeah, she okay. does. I'll shut up again. <laughs> Go, Pam. Well, I know that I want to throat punch that reporter. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, yes. Yeah. I will bail you out, Pam. You throw punch him, I'll bail you out. Thank you. Sure I I'll cannot you mask, take him. Wear so you can get out. I just cannot so take him. I just, he needs to I go know. away. I mean, just, oh, constantly in the face. And, and just her driving her up for a while. And I know that there's a reason behind it because I think what he's doing is eventually, you know, poking the bear where, uh, you know, she, well, she, already attacked, she already attacked him today, but maybe that's how the, the drug thing will come out and, and the depression and yep. the anxiety and whatever, and she'll get help and so on and so forth. But I just, oh, my gosh, I just can't take him. I know he's awful, but oh, I have something to offer, and this is something. Who who would have thought we'd be rooting for Gladys? I know. 
I know, but kudos, though, the way they wrote that. I, I, okay, General Hospital, I have to give you amazing points for something. Over the last couple of months, you have turned the way you write the women and the women friendships on General Hospital. You have done a complete 180. I am so proud. I am so happy. The, the interactions between Carly and, and, and uh, Sam, there's so many good, well-written women moments on this show. But it's like an evolution. The weirdness it is such an evolution. They have really got it together. They are writing women that are, that are strong, that are believable. They're not one-dimensional. They're not one note. Even Nina, for, you know, love her or hate her, they're writing her in such a way that we have so many options about how to feel about Nina. There's the wounded Nina. There's the psychopathic, always calculating Nina. There's the Nina that's trapped in, in fate, and fate just keeps dumping it on her. There's so many different ways to feel about that character. And the writing that keeps giving us all of these different outs is amazing. And when we – oh, my God. I'm just – yeah, kudos, General Hospital. I'm done. And – um. <sighs> I just had it on my mind, and now I forgot when I was listening to you. <laughs> um, All right, real quick. I'm so team Spinelli and Britt hooking up. Yes, yeah, please too. hook up Spinelli and me Britt. Too. Yes, please. Done. You are? Yeah. Yes! That would be so oh. cool of a relationship. Yeah. Yes, it would. I'm with you there. Go ahead, Candace. Candace. No, are you girl. squeaking? Go ahead, girl. Saying, yeah. I, no, I think she's squeaking no. and saying yeah. No, no, this is a no, 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 we're not doing this. No, 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 no. Here's what we're going to do. <laughs> Austin and Britt, okay, or Drew and Britt, Maxie. and Spinelli and Maxie. Thank you, and good night. Okay, <laughs> so if it goes that way, I'm going to go with I would rather have Britt and Drew. I'm sorry, I don't mm-hmm. like him with Carly. I don't like I don't. him with Carly. I know I they connected in the elevator a couple of years ago during the crossover ABC fanatical <laughs> thing, and it was so cool. And they were cool in the elevator, and I felt them then. I did. I did. I felt Ryan and Carly. Yeah, I do not Carly and Drew. I do not feel Carly no. and Drew. No. I like him well, with I felt, with Brent. I felt. I felt Drew with Britt when she, he showed up when she got stood up. Yes. Mm-hmm. So yes, I'm good with you know, with Drew and Britt too. I'm gonna say Spinelli and Britt. <laughs> what? But I, I'm I, sorry. I, don't I think, think Spinelli, Spinelli and, and Britt, Britt would be, be fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think That's it would be so cute. much fun. That's think so of, real cute. quick, Candace. No, just not. wait. Wait. Put 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 your put your current thought process aside. Britt does have that fun side of her. I know she does. she's Faison's daughter, but she does have that fun side about her. And and Spinelli and her could get into little hijinks together. It would be so cute to balance the hotness and the nerdness right. of both of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I But I saw that. See, here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to be completely 100, and this is a, not a dig at Kelly. I feel as though they really kind of don't know what to do with Britt right now. I agree. And, and so that's why because... I said, like, right, I mean, okay, let's rip the Band-Aid off. Okay. Her popular story ended because of a, of an actor leaving, right? Okay, let's just call it for what it mm-hmm. is. And I think that's my problem about Drew and Carly is he's not Jason G.H., Stop it. Like, we yes. show fans remember what Carly did and Sonny did to Drew as soon as they found out he wasn't Jason. They pretty much was like deuces. Now, of course, Carly and Drew are going to cross paths. That's fine. Port Charles mm-hmm. is a small town. But stop trying to mimic Jason and Carly with Drew and Carly. With Drew, uh-huh. don't do like some other show. Well, some other shows did. And then they stop. Then they're starting to do it again. Have him circulate. 
Because to me, I'm like, yeah. okay, Drew and Britt, that was un. I, I was not expecting that. I was like, oh, that's a, that's interesting. That's you can have Drew and has Drew and uh, yeah, Elizabeth and Drew seen each other. You have yeah. Drew and Elizabeth. Yeah. Drew. you you could have right. Drew and I mean, Maxie. I, I'm sorry, but you could have Drew and Maxie too. And, um. I don't know about Mama that, and I don't feel Austin and Max. And I'm and I'm so. and I'm looking at all ways because the thing is, is that see, with Maxi, oh, Gh, we gotta have a talk. I feel as though with Maxi, just keep her single for a very long time, because if if they're gonna do if they were to do Drew and Maxi, it would still give you the same vibes as Austin and Maxi. Which is not a vibe. A little more effort. <laughs> yeah, it would be the same vibe, but at least with with Drew and Max, I probably would feel some kind of like effort was put into it instead of just saying, okay, we're we'll throw in a dash of Maxi with a little bit of Austin and see if it comes out making a gourmet dinner. It ain't happening. So we're gonna just need Maxi to stay single for a little bit, have her continue to go to the yoga classes, and you know, let God be the glory. But, okay, no, uh, let's yeah. be honest. You know, all of us, if we're going to be honest, if any of this reels about a Maxi and Spinelli reunion, that would be amazing. Honestly, with everyone that's on Canvas, Maxi would be so perfectly aligned to get back with Spinelli. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and let will them, it happen? Let they just need to. Yeah, they just need to, to be honest, they do need somebody to be in her, like, orbit to get her to that point. Because her, you know, you know, giving um the scarf, by the way, Curse of Storms, Emmy Rollins, I know that scarf. I know where, I've seen that scarf before. Um, yeah, you know, good call, them Candace. All, up. <laughs> hmm? Say it again? I said good call. I said yeah. good call because I was um, thinking the same thing. Right? Look at that. Cross promotion uh-huh. on General Hospital. Mm-hmm. Go get yourself a scarf, lady. Um, but, you know, having her be the best, you know, doing all that stuff, that's fine. But I also need Max. Where's our kids? In the attic. I'm going to ask that question. In the attic? <laughs> okay. I'm done. Moving okay, on. Okay, listen. <laughs> no, no, you're right. She has become the new Elizabeth. Okay, and, yeah, and, and yeah. honestly, Ooh. at some point, no, General Hospital, no, not, you no, have better, no. wait, wait, hold up, I gotta say this, General Hospital, you have better address this, at some point, Liz better have the opportunity to say to Maxie, oh, you blasted me about how I took care of my children, and how they were always in my grandmother's fucking attic, et cetera, et cetera, okay, maybe she won't, I'm sorry, I used that <laughs> word. Um, but <laughs> she better get up in Liz's face and say, y- you judged me all these years, and um, hello, et cetera, because no. Maxie's doing the Anthony. same thing. Anthony, uh-uh, have this scene. Hey, Maxie, so you want to try to, so you you want to be me now? Let's see. You used to jump on me about having different baby fathers. Hmm. How many, yep. how many children do you have, and how many baby fathers do you have? At least mine wasn't psychotic. That's debatable. I need, I need them, right? That's debatable. Yeah. But go on. Yeah. Think, think about it. I mean, she used she jumped on Elizabeth for you yep. know sleeping. You know she was on that bandwagon too. Didn't know which yep, baby yes, daddy she was. You know what, Maxie? I was I was going to defend you until I thought about that. You know what? We need Lucky Spencer back on General Hospital. Sad. Yes, we do. Well, Anthony? Yeah. Yes. Didn't you bring okay. something up on the last show? So, we will be seeing a little bit of Lucky Spencer in July into August and then again in November. As flashback? Rumor has it. No, 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 no. Jonathan Jackson is going to pick up and film. For a couple of weeks that will air in end of July into August and then again in November. And the rumor has it, I do not have any confirmation on this, but the rumor has it that it coincides with an appearance with Tony Gary. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I heard well. that. I didn't. Yeah. 
Jonathan Jackson is confirmed. Tony Geary, we do not know if it's true. It's just a rumor. But I love that we're going to have Jonathan Jackson for about a month in the summer and then a couple of weeks in November. That tells me that it's going to be the wrap-up of a certain storyline in November and in the summer it's going to be a whole bunch of things that haven't been addressed and whatever storyline he comes in on. So we'll hear about, like, why haven't you contacted your boys? And, you know, all this has happened and you never even showed up. Your sister's in a coma, by the way. Oh, do you want to go visit her and, and say hello to the BBB well, machine? They, remember, they mentioned that, Anthony, remember, they mentioned that about Lucky and Lulu and about the, ki- the kids because they've been Skyping. Lucky was Skyping with the kids. Uh-huh. But Lulu, right. yeah. he did go and see her at that medical off screen because you know everybody had an off screen memorial for 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 Luke and all that stuff. I'm actually hoping. I actually was hoping for Lucky because of Elizabeth's sake too. Yeah. Because Elizabeth, you guys are still dreaming. Well, uh, she got something wrong with her. And because <laughs> Becky is going to be celebrating 25 years on General Hospital yep. in August. Tag 25 years, folks. I know, right? I know. Come on. I'm sorry. I'm going to say this. I'm cutting you off and everything, and I realize that I'm doing this, but here's the deal. 25 years. If you're giving her a dissociative identity disorder storyline, I don't want it. I don't want to say it. I'm not interested in it, except if you're giving it to Becky because it's 25 years and you want to let her shine and you want to give her all kinds of great material to play with, then all right, let me reverse, put that big old moving truck into reverse. I will bring all my furniture back up into the mansion. I'm moving back in general. hospital. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you're doing this because you're going to let Elizabeth like completely fall to pieces and then pick herself back up on screen. If you're giving her the storyline she deserves, I'm moving that that back up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hello. Hello, people. Start moving that furniture back in the mansion. I'm not getting a divorce at all. All right. <laughs> because, Go ahead, Candace. Because here's the thing, because I was literally thinking about this. Okay. First of all, General Hospital has been trolling the fans for almost – Four months and two days. Yes, folks, I'm keeping score of Jeff Weber. How many times we've oh, heard yeah. more Jeff Weber's name in the last right. couple of weeks than we have in yep. 25 years? Okay. Yep. One. Two, you know, Elizabeth has been through a lot, you know, in 25 years that she's, I mean, yeah, she's been in, in the mental ward. Before. Oh my God! What if her what? other personality is Jeff Weber? What if her other personality is being a father to herself because she's never had a father? <gasps> you right. can I have mean, that idea. About she's raising Frank, three you boys can take on that her idea. own. You can, you can give me a little gift basket down here in Miami, Florida. I'll give you my address for one. Go ahead. <laughs> Screw that! I'm taking Venmo. Um, but also think about all of her relationships. Lucky was her savior, right? Let's let's call it yep. what it was. Lucky was her, her savior. Jason was the danger, right? Yeah. A factor that she did she didn't want to let go because remember Elizabeth was Lizzie, Tizzy, Lizzie, Dizzy. That's what I used to call her. Then you had you yep. know Franco, and that's no, there was you one. Well, no, Ewan. the reason I'm, I'm wait, well, I didn't get to the, the middle sections yet. Okay. Well, you and yeah, you. Yeah, because a couple Ewan, of the okay. other ones do matter. So does Rick. Rick matters, too. I mean, too, Xander matters because Xander yes, was Xander the, matters. Yeah, and always, um, the fact <laughs> that she 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 went with the – she was – the lust got the best of her with Xander. Amen. But, I mean, other than that, she was always – she always wore a, a label on her. So 90 I would seconds. love to see the oh. – yeah. I would love yeah. to see something like that. Okay. Um, you said two? Okay. Stephanie Amnesia, she remembers but doesn't remember Sheila. Yep. Real quick. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. That's our question. How was That's that? That's it. I'm bold. <laughs> Why in our yeah, that was um, it. Adam was with, uh, <laughs> oh, with Sharon. Oh, Ray died of a heart attack. <laughs> yes. And Ray, Ray died, died of a heart, of a heart attack, attack, y'all. <laughs> yep. If, if it happens oh. in real life, full alert. <laughs> I already, I already knew he died of a heart attack before he even, uh, what's his name, even came over there and said that. 
I just had that feeling. Oh, you just had a feeling? Yeah. You, yeah. But we also have yeah. a feeling we'll be back mm-hmm. soon. We'll probably be back around mm-hmm. the daytime Emmy nominations, which is May 5th. Yeah, and allegedly. we're going to have a lot to talk about. A lot. I love you all. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks again, Patrika Dabo, for everything, for this yes, wonderful girl. interview. And you guys, stay well. Stay blessed. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. Yay, yay. The gang was all here. See you next yeah. time. The take two Thank you, Pam, for participating. Yep. Good night, everybody. Bye, guys.